Hey everyone, thank you so much for clicking on this video. The fact that you are willing to sacrifice a few minutes out of your day to consume my content really does mean the world to me. For those of you that are unaware, we're on a journey as we review and react to every single episode of The Acolyte. The first episode left me going, mm, I really enjoyed the second episode. The second episode was much better than the first in my opinion, and I'm very much looking forward to the rest of of the show. So yeah, honestly, I was not expecting to do almost like a complete 180 from the first episode to this one, but the first episode left me with more questions and answers. I didn't necessarily enjoy many of the performances. The choreography let me down, but I am much more intrigued after watching this episode and after spending more time with the characters and watching the story unfold, I am actually quite excited. But let's just start off with the events from the beginning to the end of the episode and we'll react to them together. If you guys have watched this episode, then feel free to watch the video. If you haven't watched episode two yet, I would suggest you go watch that first, then come back because we're going to be talking about spoilers. But let's just jump right off and talk about the goofy ass dance that May always does, where she kind of like swings her arms and she's like, attack me. It's a goofy ass stance. I'm not going to feel threatened or intimidated by someone who stands like this. So that's just my thoughts and feelings. But then are we supposed to be taking her character seriously? Are we supposed to feel threatened by her character where in every single fight that she's in, she looks weak by comparison. I mean, that happened in the first episode with the first Jedi. Here we have a Jedi meditating. He's not even doing anything and May can't even touch him. How are we supposed to take May as a threat? when every time we see her in combat, she's losing by a large margin, or she just wins by happenstance. How am I supposed to take her as a threat? And then just tell me if it was me who thought this was weird, or, or rather just a form of bad writing. We have the Jedi being told, cool, go to Planet Oliga, find Mei, oh, and bring the prisoner with you. She can be an asset. Could she really be an asset? I understand that they're sisters, and I understand she was trained as a Jedi, but she's still a potential you know, suspect, and she isn't a trained Jedi at the moment. She's not an official Jedi member. So it just felt like lazy writing to me. But I mean, it got all the characters where they needed to go. So I understand why they did it from a writing point of view. It just did feel lazy. And I wouldn't ever expect something like that to work in a real life scenario. But then again, we're talking about Star Wars. And then again, we get the fight between Mei and the Jedi Master. She gets humbled in every single fight she's in. We have an actual Jedi Master there just absolutely schooling her. And again, I just want to say, what is it with Jedi Masters and not actually using their lightsabers? This is the first time I've ever watched any Disney Star Wars property, or any Star Wars property, actually. And I'm going, why aren't the Jedi taking out their lightsabers? <laughs> I love Jedi. I love lightsabers. Let me see more of them. But we're currently in the situation where Jedi Masters just would rather do hand-to-hand -hand combat and we don't see that very often. Like I understand, yes, Jedi are trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but they have lightsabers for a reason. And I just don't understand why that isn't taking place in the show. And again, I, I just have to say, I love the fact that we're getting diverse lightsaber colors as well. Yellow lightsabers, so cool. My favorite canon color, I want to see more of it. And then again, another situation where I felt like the writing was just lazy is when Mei escapes and she kind of like does that whole like sand tornado. I would assume the Jedi Masters could just go, no thank you, disperse the sand and watch her run away. Like, or even once she's run away, they have the force, they can sense her, they know where she is. We know that's a force ability. So it just felt like lazy writing once again, and that's twice in one episode. But yes, again, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying this series. I vastly enjoyed episode two over episode one. I'm enjoying the characters. I do hope that we slowly get more time where the cast just comes together and we can enjoy them as an ensemble. And we really start to get the dynamic of how everyone engages with one another. We're getting shades of that, but I just want that to be explored a little bit more. This episode was also significantly shorter than episode one, which I didn't enjoy. It felt very rushed. And just as I was enjoying it, it ends. But it ended in such a cool way. Did no one else think that the Wookiee Jedi was just giving massive Bigfoots with Force energy vibes. Yes, guys, no, I'm definitely very excited for episode three. If you are enjoying the Acolyte, let me know down below. If you're hating it, let me know down below. Let's get a conversation going. If you guys did enjoy this video, please give this video a like. Do not be afraid to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I hope to see you guys again in another video.